to make. My fragrance journey ended a long time ago. It ended 11 years ago with this. There have been one or two fragrances that have come close to this, but this is the fragrance that ended my journey in a way before it even began. In many ways, I could have just stopped with Melissa Imperial, but I loved the community and I started to fall in love with the art form and I just wanted to keep going. And so I entered the fragrance community. And the community was fun. It was like being part of this really fun club. Fragrances to me are incredible. I love different aspects about them, especially the time capsule element of fragrances. When some fragrances that I have can remind me of certain places, certain times, even certain people. Fragrance is an art form that is undefinable, unknowable, unsayable. It's known to many that I come and go from this community. I'll do a disappearing act for a little while. And after 2021, which was actually one of my all-time favorite years of, of doing this, of being the fragrance apprentice, I had to leave because I had my film. And I started to get more work in the film and TV industry and different side projects and things like that. So I took an extended leave from the community. And then that was done. I was excited to come back. And I did. But something was different about it, but I couldn't quite articulate it. It was something that I tried to ignore, but I couldn't. But then I get this one comment, and negative comments, they don't usually bother me anymore because remember, I've been doing this for nearly 10 years. I sometimes forget that, but I've heard it all before, you know, like, oh, my hair's thinning and I'm too short and I've put on a bit of weight recently. You know, I've heard it all before mostly. So they don't usually get to me, but this one comment does. I think about it a lot. I remember it very well, actually. It said, I understand you're still trying to get back into reviewing because of how long you've been working on the upcoming movie, but you can take some more time if need be. You're not giving us the spark we've once gotten from you. Please bring it back. Put in more life into these new videos. Some of us miss it. They probably can't just say so because it's been a busy year. No excuses regardless. And my initial reaction to that is, who the fuck do you think you are? Lost my spark, eh? What am I to you? A fucking light switch. You have no idea who I am. And you have no idea what you're fucking talking about. Comments like this don't usually bother me, but this one really got under my skin because they were right. I didn't love this anymore. And the fragrance community that I once loved had become something else, something menacing, something wrong. And I realize I don't want to be the fragrance person. That's enough about me. Let's talk about you. You're probably a man, 
I know there are some women who, uh, who watch my videos, but speaking statistically and demographically, you're a man. In your teenagers, maybe in your early 20s, which means you're vulnerable. And uh, I don't want to make generalizations, but you probably don't think a lot about yourself. Probably don't feel too good about yourself. Probably feel as though there's something not quite right with you, that you're not good enough. You feel this gnawing anxiety about yourself all the time, right? Maybe you're in your 30s or your 40s and, well, time's ticking on, isn't it? And things didn't really quite go the way that you thought that they were gonna go. And the more that time passes, the less relevant you feel, the less in control of everything you are. If only there was just something that could make all that pain go away. After all, society is constantly telling you that there is something wrong with you. Maybe you're in your early 20s and you're still a virgin. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Maybe you're in your late 30s and you still don't have a family. I mean, come on, man. Jesus, get it together. Maybe you're in your mid 40s and sure, you've got the family and you've got the house, but it isn't the big house that you thought that you were gonna get, that you dreamed of all those years ago. And sure, you're alive, but you're not exactly living. You just feel completely and utterly alone, isolated from everybody and everything else. Maybe you just feel angry. Maybe you just feel really upset. Maybe you feel just depressed, that sort of, that hole that's within you. You just feel kind of empty and, and perfect, right? Because maybe you know this or maybe you don't, but that state of fear, that state of insecurity, that state as though something is missing from you, makes you perfectly susceptible to advertising. So at this point, maybe you see a fragrance advert. I remember I saw an advert for Diesel, Only the Brave, and it was a great advert, and it was eye-catching, and everybody looked so grown up, and I remember thinking to myself at 19 years old, you know, I've never bought myself a fragrance. I've probably told you this story before. I've never bought myself a fragrance. It would be such a cool and adult thing to do to buy my own fragrance. So that's the part, that's the portion of the story that I told you. The portion of the story that I didn't tell you is that, honestly, I really hated myself. I saw myself as this sort of ugly, nerdy kid and women weren't interested in me and all that kind of jazz but to be completely honest I mean I was frightened of women but I was frightened of my own shadow to be completely honest and I just wanted something to make my pain and make my fear about women go away and, and I think that that's one of the main reasons I bought that fragrance because if I had that fragrance if I had that thing then maybe that would that would alleviate my fear or, or, or at least if I had that fragrance then then it would be sort of like a, a talisman or some or, or something just to, to, to make to elevate me as a person and I saw that advert and I thought wait is this it is this finally the answer is this the thing that I've been missing is this the part of the conundrum that I've been is this part of the equation that I've I've missed I mean you look at the diesel only the brave adverts you look at the one they did with Liam Hemsworth they're literally selling you that if you buy that fragrance, women will be attracted to you. So instead of buying, a, a, you know, putting money towards a car or putting money towards a house, you buy a fragrance and you've been sold on the idea that fragrances equal attraction. I mean, do I really have to tell you that the people who market fragrances don't know your weaknesses, they don't know your insecurities, they don't know what you're afraid of? Of course they do, and they want to pry upon that. And of course, the idea is, is that if they pry upon your fear, which is you're not good enough, you're not attractive enough, you're not this, you're not the other, but we can give you this, and that'll make it all better. That's the whole point. That's the name of the game. That's how fragrances are sold. Fragrance is a strange product to sell. First of all, it's a luxury product. As in, it's a product that you don't really need at all. You want to smell nice? Just use a bar of high quality soap. You'll be fine. There is no reason for you to own a single fragrance. Not just that, but it's one of the only products that you don't actually know what the product is unless you explicitly try it. With a film, 
you can watch a trailer. You want to buy a video game, well, you can either watch the trailer or see some Let's Play footage, and you will generally get an idea. Things like functional products, like the JML Halo Wave or the George Foreman Grill, you can still watch something to get an idea of what that product will do and whether you'd be interested in buying it or not. And food, well that's an interesting one. We all have a general estimation of what a pizza tastes like, or a burger, or fried chicken. But fragrances are difficult to sell to a general audience. Saying that something smells citrusy, or smoky, or woody may not translate very well. So then what? What does one do to promote fragrances? Well, you have to get a little creative. When fragrances started their advertising campaigns, they were very tame and informative. But then the late 1970s happened, which supercharged consumerism, especially in the beauty market, to an unprecedented level. Fragrance adverts became more about selling a lifestyle rather than just selling soap. The 80s were by far the craziest times in fragrance advertising, especially for men. There's one advert so bold that it all out said that if you have this fragrance, well, you're a man now. Gunaway, the man's cologne from France. For men who aren't kids anymore, would Gunaway suit you? Ask a woman. It's crazy that that advert entered the fragrance zeitgeist, and 30 years later, I felt the same way, the same idea with Diesel Only the Brave. The adverts got more and more ambitious and daring, trying to exploit and garner more and more money on the basis that if you buy these fragrances, then finally, finally, you'll be something, you'll be somebody, and all the girls will love you, and all the people that you meet will just think that you're the coolest guy or gal in the town. But then the adverts started to get warped and stranger and weirder and not really about anything. They became more obtuse and a little bit out of control for both men and women's fragrances. And this ludicrousness peaked in 2012 with this Brad Pitt Chanel No. 5 advert. It's not a journey. Every journey ends, but we go on. The world turns and we turn with it where you can see Brad Pitt slowly losing his mind, mirroring probably how the general consumer felt about fragrance adverts. The French perfume adverts, they make so much sense, don't they? I see her, I want her. She is what she is. She sees, but she is blind. She has legs, but she has no legs. She is alive, but she is dead. She's a woman, but she's a monkey. <laughs> that I want her because she is what she is and what she is is a blind, dead, disabled monkey <laughs> and I know that I want her Shalema by Gulan What the fuck does it smell of? I'm not saying that fragrances are bad they're not but what I'm saying to you is that with advertising it and now social media with the way that it is you're being sold fragrances in the wrong way and you're being told that these fragrances are going to do things that they're just not. Uh, fragrances have become absolutely sort of bizarre. They're touted as being able to do all these different things that they simply just cannot do. Fragrances can, you know, fragrances can get you laid, fragrances can get you a girlfriend, fragrances can uh, get you friends, fragrances can get you results, fragrances can get you the job interview, fragrances can do all this kind of stuff. Anything other than fragrances can make you smell nice. And you buy it because that's what you're sold. And so what happens is, is a domino effect that can lead to addiction. So let's start with an example. So let's say that you don't really know that much about fragrances. You come into this community as you have, and you get told that La Mal Le Parfum is oh, amazing. It makes you attractive, all the girls love it, therefore they love you, and it'll get you that job that you've always wanted, and for some reason it'll get you money. These are powerful subconscious suggestions into your internal desires, into desires that we all have. So you buy Lamal Le Parfum. 
you get it, you spray it, you, you walk around and nothing happens. Nothing changes. No new girlfriends, no new job. And so now you have a choice. You've got one of three options. The first option is you think that there's something wrong with the reviewer. We'll get to that. There's something wrong with you. No, you did exactly what the reviewer told you to, and everybody's been saying that Lamella Parfum does all this kind of stuff that it should totally do, right? Because everybody's saying it. So maybe there's something wrong with the fragrance. Well, okay. Lamal Parfum disappears. But hey, wait, there's more. Next, people are now talking about this. This is Sauvage Elixir by Dior. Well, no, you know that last one, well, maybe not, but this one, oh my goodness, well, this has got lavender and it's very earthy and very classical, so this one, uh, in certain circumstances, will definitely get you compliments and it will definitely get you uh, women who are attracted to it and attracted to you and it'll get you the friends and all that kind of stuff. So, you go out, you wear this, and nothing happens. And again, you get back to that choice. Are we doing something wrong? Are you doing something wrong? You're not ready for those two options yet. No, it's the fragrance. So you've bought it, you've spent over a hundred pounds on it, and then we move on. These fragrances that you're getting, well, they just haven't suited you yet. They just haven't fit you yet. So maybe, oh, well now everybody's talking about Spice Bomb Infrared by Victor and Rolf. And well, this one is uh, very modern and very masculine and uh, will definitely suit you. Maybe one of the reviewers talks about who this might suit and it reminds you of you and it checks all the boxes. And no, well, this one definitely has got to be it. So what do you do? You buy it figuratively and literally and nothing happens. And you're not ready yet to admit that this isn't working because you've got all these people as positive reinforcement you've got all this opinion bias coming at you that no fragrances definitely do all these different things that they do apart from just making you smell nice and so you start an addictive cycle Well, maybe I just haven't bought a niche fragrance yet. Maybe that's the thing that's missing from this whole equation. That's the thing, you know, I've bought all these designers, but they're all synthetic shit anyway. And I mean, Mont Blanc Explorer isn't actually Aventus. Hey, maybe I should buy Aventus because, you know, that's the fragrance, right? They must be expensive because, you know, that's the real that's the real game, that's the real fragrance world. None of these silly, stupid little designers. No. It's time. You are actually going to buy Aventus. And it's a huge moment. A big decision. Finally, now, you're going to be a real fragrance collector. Because that's what you've been told. By the adverts, and by the social media, and by us fragrance reviewers. We've been right behind you all the time. You've graduated, top of your class. You enter the store because you don't want to buy it online. What if it's a fake? You could buy a Club Nui Intense or an Explorer, but no, you've committed. You're going downtown and you're going to the Creed Boutique. You want the real thing. You take it home, you open the package and it's pretty and beautiful perfect and you spray it on and wow well that's a little underwhelming actually but hey you know you've bought in and this is creed this is a creed fragrance creed of the best right and you go out with some friends to a social event and well there's that girl you like that girl from work you're at the work event and, and damn you've got Aventus which you just spent hundreds of pounds on and all those reviewers and people and propaganda that you heard and that you bought into you're going to be fine you've got this and in that moment you give Aventus the power because it's Aventus this is going to make you attractive right not you Aventus you go into the building you see your friends you see her reel around and then there she is you see her you walk up to her you're in a space, maybe you tilt your head just a little bit, you wait, here it comes. The big moment, we've all promised you. You're ready, you were born for this. Here we go, and... Nothing! <laughs> what did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> 
it's only a fragrance for goodness sake it's not a magic potion it doesn't do anything else than just smell nice what's probably going to happen is when you wear this out is you will get a compliment but more than likely it'll be from a guy so you spent four hundred dollars to get complimented by a guy but here's the thing he doesn't think he's going to go oh my god that smells really good where did you get that so he doesn't care about you he doesn't think that you smell good he's just smelt this and thought to himself oh I want to smell that good so you spend four hundred dollars to essentially advertise Creed's Aventus and then it will continue on because he'll spend four hundred dollars in Aventus then he'll, he'll go out and then another guy will think oh god I want to smell that good they won't care about him they'll just want to smell good and on and on and on and on it'll, on it'll go so you all spent four hundred dollars to be a walking marketing campaign for this fragrance. And that's how usually fragrance compliments actually work. <laughs> Great, isn't it? One of the most popular video types in the fragrance community is asking women their opinions on fragrances. My main concern is we may not have been asking women the right questions about fragrances. Do you remember a single fragrance that any of your uh, boyfriends or anything like that has ever worn? Not that I know of. I've never really talked to men about fragrances, and if I do, it's usually just like a spritz of like deodorant. Okay. Uh, have you ever complimented a man on a fragrance? No, I haven't. Never? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Um, would you ever be attracted or date uh, somebody uh, based on their fragrances that they're wearing? No, definitely not purely based on their fragrances. Have you never smelt somebody in the street and thought, oh wow, I'd really like to you know, get to know them and date them and you know, take them home? No, I mean, I've definitely noticed that someone smells good and they walk by, but my first thought isn't I want to date them by any means. Have you ever dated uh, a guy because of the fragrance that they've been wearing? No. no. <laughs> Okay, have you ever complimented a guy on the fragrance that they're wearing? Yeah, 100%. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good, good. But when you complimented them, that meant that you wanted to date them, right? Mm, no. No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, well, 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 what if it was a 250 pound fragrance? That's just showing off. <laughs> Wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> okay, okay. What about a 1,000 uh, pound Creed limited edition um, fragrance signed by Olivier Creed himself? No, that's extra showing off. <laughs> yeah, not for me. What if the fragrance was uh, Creed's Aventus? Um, I don't think it would really matter. I think it would be more about like their personality, getting to know them. Oh, come on, don't be like that. What if it was a $500 <laughs> fragrance? They've got a $500 fragrance on. Honestly, I don't know if I'd really know the difference, to be honest. I don't really know men's fragrances enough to really know the difference. Oh, but you're a woman. Surely you would know instinctively in some sort of psychic, majestic way. I don't think so, no. Because it could be ugly, you know? <laughs> uh, what if the fragrance was $250? Doesn't matter, I'm worth more than that. What if, it were, what if the fragrance was $500? You could keep climbing, I'm worth more than any fragrance. Um, what if the guy was wearing um, a, a really expensive fragrance, like a 500 euro fragrance? Would you be interested in, in him then? No, because I definitely wouldn't be able to even smell the difference whether it's a cheap fragrance or an expensive fragrance, so no, I wouldn't be more interested in dating him. Would you know the difference between a $10 fragrance and a $500 fragrance? Probably not, as long as it was nice. Yeah. It's not the fragrance that makes a person attractive and dateable. I see. And you're German, correct? Yeah. German. Ge yeah. Uh, wonderful. Living in Switzerland. We're living in Switzerland. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Jeremy Fragrance? Oh my goodness, of course I have. He's a very strange guy. Would a fragrance purely, you know, do it for you and make you go, oh, right, yeah, sure, sure, absolutely? It wouldn't make me say yes, but it would definitely make me say no. That yes. makes sense. Yeah, good point. Like, if someone smells bad, yeah, like, no. But if they smell nice, you're like, okay, maybe, you know. It would have you, their so have you ever been turned off by someone who's wearing a fragrance? Yes. yes. Uh, do you remember any of the fragrances that any of your boyfriends have ever worn? I just remember the ones that I was... Um, kind of appalled by, which I didn't like. Two sweet scents. And I think that even a scent and fragrance can make someone more unattractive rather than attractive if it's too much. Do you remember a single fragrance that any of your boyfriends have ever worn? I feel like they all wear Sauvage, she don't they? <laughs> I feel like every girl has dated a Sauvage mm. boy. 
Right, so would Sauvage put you off at this point? No, because it smells nice. Yeah, yeah, no, it smells nice. Yeah. But then also sometimes it has like connotations with yeah. a certain vibe of fella. So you've got a quite a strapping fellow here. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that you were attracted to him initially, of course, because of the fragrance that he was wearing. Uh, yeah, no, definitely not. No. <laughs> oh, uh, what attracted you to this man? Oh, it's his personality, definitely. Do you own any fragrances? God, no. <laughs> no? No. Not none? None. Then how were you able to attract this lady? Uh, just pure athletic skill. <laughs> athletic skill? Yeah. Oh, right. So football or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so sport's the answer, right? Sport's how you get girls, right? <laughs> it definitely yeah. helps, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool. So fragrances had nothing to do with your relationship at all? No. I'm sorry, I, I don't think that I or my audience are going to believe you. Uh, but, uh, well, good luck with your, with your fraudulent relationship without fragrances, if that's how it's going to be. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, you bought Aventus, didn't really work out. So now what do you do? In fact, at this point, to be honest, if you bought tens or hundreds and hundreds of fragrances for the result of getting a compliment or whatever, you will probably get at least one compliment. And then you were thinking, uh, wait, is that it? That was so but What did you sort of expect? What, what have you been buying into? Did you think that you'd wear the fragrance and then you'd become more confident or you'd finally become more outgoing or, or have you just used it as a little bit of an armor around you, an armor around your, Insecurities are an armor around your fears so that people can't really sort of get into it. It's like an ozone lane that you've created yourself. So that everybody just smells you, you know? And they can't really sort of dig any deeper. But yeah, sure, you get the compliment, but it wasn't what you expected. In fact, none of this has really been what you expected, but you still want to believe in the fragrance dream. You still subconsciously in the back of your mind want this to work. You don't quite know what you want to work, but you know that you want something to work because you've now spent a ridiculous amount of money on fragrances. So we had option A, option B, option C, and you've been taking option C. Well, there's something wrong with the fragrance. But now you've graduated from that, and now you're gonna go to option B. There's something wrong with those damned reviewers. There is a subreddit so controversial that when I mention the idea of committing this section of the video to it, some of my fellow reviewers were not happy at all. Because most reviewers don't want to look at it and wish it didn't exist, and for good reason. It's called Oh The Jerks, and it is a fascinating window into the side effect of the type of people who come into fragrances for the wrong reasons, don't get what they wanted out of it, and then become bitter, antagonistic, and sometimes downright cruel. In this subreddit, you will sometimes find genuinely funny memes and well thought out satire against the fragrance community and especially at its reviewers. But most of the times, and especially with its first iteration, fragrance jerks, you will just find some of the most genuinely cruel abuse against fragrance reviewers on the internet. Yes, even me. I have seen my friends and contemporaries bullied into oblivion with pictures and harsh words. I was astounded when I once read three whole paragraphs written on there dedicated to me, my looks, and how I'm a failed film student who won't actually get anywhere in life. I have not met any of these people. I have no ill will against them. But yet, the way some of them act is as if I have personally attacked and hurt them. But sometimes it can get a little scary. Like for example, this gentleman who says that he met me at a fragrance meetup in London and said I was very arrogant and rude and that we ended up in a restaurant together and I had terrible table manners. The issue with this is, apart from my two stints at Milan, I have never been to any fragrance meetups, whether it be in London or anywhere else. But people have read that, 
And because they've read it, they think it's true. And at first, it was quite shocking. It's a bizarre and jarring experience to put out content that you have good intentions with, only to be met with not just constructive criticism, but pure, vile hatred. I have heard many of my reviewers all have different and various ways of coping with it. Most pretend it doesn't exist. Some have even tried and threatened legal action against them. Michella, because she's Michella, actually loves them and embraces them. She once told me that if I'm not being talked about on there, then I'm doing something wrong. So why bring them up? At first when I heard about them, I was naturally angry, upset, concerned, as anyone would be. But as I've looked at this hobby and had great introspection about what's going on, and even in my own journey, I realize that the jerks, whether we embrace them or we hate them, the truth is they were inevitable. I want to say at this point that this is not a unique story. I've seen trolls and hate groups in the fitness industry, fashion community, lifestyle community. Most self-help communities all have similar experiences because most of the people who get into those types of communities usually have something wrong with them to begin with and they're trying to solve it. But with fragrance, I am not condoning any of what these people have said or what they have done. But could it be that some of them may have a genuine right to be angry? Remember what I said at the start? I was lonely hurt and wanted something to feel better. I wanted something to make me feel more attractive and likeable. And the fragrance story told me that if I bought these fragrances, I would be. Then the fragrances don't work. You're angry. And so you're going to take it out on those who you felt lied to you. Some of the criticism of the community are, however, very true. The same lists, the same subjects, the same wild promises of sex and companionship, of confidence and power. The same video. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. This and is true. But then over. it gets to the point where things get bad and blown out of proportion. Your emotions run riot to the point of maybe even delusion. This is where all fragrance reviewers are evil, money grabbing liars trying to fool you and make money off you. This is where people like John S. appear. John S. is a commenter on my videos, except he only comments on my George Zaharoff related videos. In fact, if you go to mostly any reviewer who has made a George Zaharoff video, there he will be. You see, he thinks that anyone who reviews a George Zaharoff fragrance is either being paid by George Zaharoff or is trying to get into the business with him and make a fragrance with him. And unfortunately, he is not alone. John S. thinks that there is a giant Zaharoff conspiracy and that only he can see it and that only he is telling the truth. Or, oh no, maybe he's right. Maybe he already is being paid off by George Zaharoff. Or maybe we just like Zaharoff fragrances and we're happy to review them. There is some I don't like, to be honest. Like, I really enjoy tobacco. Like, it's a masterpiece. But leather tobacco, it's just a bit too much. It's kind of like too much of a good thing. It reminds me of the Goldilocks and Three Bears with the three porridges. You know, the one too hot, one too cold, one just right. Oh, you don't know this? Oh, okay. <clears throat> In 1837, Robert Southey, only eight years before his death, penned Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Modern literature would never be the same again. In this story, Goldilocks breaks in to the house of the Three Bears. Mama Bear's porridge, Baby Bear's porridge, and Father Bear's porridge all there at her mercy. She tries them all individually. One of the porridges is far, far too hot. One of the porridges is far, far too cold. But then 
she finds this beautiful, perfect temperature porridge. It's delicious. Some of you may know this story. But what you don't know is that that porridge was made by Zaharoff Porridges. And this whole story created by Robert Sunday was actually paid for by George Zaharoff. Because George Zaharoff has been living for hundreds and hundreds of years. And he won't stop until every single industry has his name on it. Until he makes the perfect fragrance. Because he also made the most perfect porridge ever. And Jonas was right this whole time. Can't you see the lines? Um... Right, sorry. What was I talking about? Oh, right. Fragrance reviewer conspiracy theories. I have seen people get so amped up, so paranoid, and so fearful reviewers to the point where it becomes like a witch hunt. Like they're witch hunters. What I find interesting is in all of this, strangely the jerks, the trolls, the conspiracy theorists, the John S's of the world are all still looking at us for the answer. They looked at us for advice, now they're looking at us for what? Retribution? Revenge? A smoking gun? But they're still not looking in the right place. And so now the question remains. Why is the community constantly putting out the same videos? Are we all just lazy? Are we all just robots? Are we all trying to fuck with you? Or is there something deeper at play? Something you don't know about? Something that only someone like me on the inside can tell you. want to be an old frag con god like like sort of you know these these old men who are sort of like you know shaking their fist at clouds of, of these of these new kids that are coming you know in with their their flashy thumbnails and stuff like that but when i started in 2014 there were only about six or seven big time fragrance uh content creators the top one was Robes OS. He was the top guy. So when you came in to do this, your expectations of success were very realistic and extraordinarily low. So somebody said to me actually recently, did you have any subscriber goals when you started? I've only had one subscriber goal, and that is 5,000 subscribers. That's it. Now, the top guy has got over 2 million. And there's more and more and more people just coming in every single day trying to become fragrance influencers. The competition in this community is at the highest that it's ever been. The competition for your eyeballs, for your attention, is at the most that it's ever been on this planet. So what can you do? When I first started, if you reviewed a single fragrance, that was guaranteed a lot of views. And what was a lot of views? Well, a lot of views is about two to 3,000 people. Now, if you review a fragrance and you get 10,000 views, that's almost considered like a failure. That's considered something that you've done wrong. The anticipation for getting views for a content creator is higher. The competition is higher. The subscriber demand, the subscriber aspiration, the whole idea of creating a fragrance YouTube channel, the aspiration is millions, literally, times higher than when I started. If I started now, I don't know if I'd even be that successful. I got into this space at an extremely early stage, in its infancy, and so I've been able to successfully continue my relevancy, and I don't know how, but if I was just starting out, I'd be buried by the algorithm. The algorithm wouldn't be interested in what I have to say and what I have to do. And this is the issue. I'm about to tell you a couple of things that are so secretive to this community and the, the real sort of inner workings of YouTube and content creation that, um, well, I, I just hope that I get invited to Essons next year. When I upload a video, I see what every other content creator on YouTube, on the platform, sees. I see detailed analytics of the watch time, of the views, and I also finally get a very condescending ironically, top 10 list. And depending on how well the video is doing, usually views-wise, 
it will tell me uh, whether it's 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. If the video is done really, really well, well, that's a 3 out of 10 or a 4 out of 10, or if it's in the middle, 5, 6. Um, if it's done incredibly well and it's actually beaten all of your other recent videos and is an absolute smash, well, it's 1 out of 10. And if it's completely failed up against your other videos, then it's a 10 out of 10. And let me tell you something, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you do, when you see that 10 out of 10 presented to you by YouTube, you feel absolutely disheartened and quite depressed. What's even worse is the stuff that I do that I really, really care about, that usually is in the 8, 9 or 10 out of 10 bracket. I have no idea how this video is going to do. I Hopefully it does very well. It's a long video, it, a lot of people will hopefully watch it but some of you might not, and all of the effort that I've put into this video and into this documentary, essentially, might fall away, and then I'll get the dreaded 8, 9, or even worse, 10 out of 10. So basically, you're getting constant and consistent feedback all the time from YouTube. YouTube is telling you all the time what videos are good, what videos aren't good, what videos work, and what videos don't work. And now, you've got a bottleneck. For me personally, this is a bit of a difficult line to walk. When I try to do my more interesting and original content, I usually, usually get punished by YouTube. But if I stick to the script, if I stick to the game, if I feed the beast, as somebody once said to me, and I do the lists that people don't even really like me doing, but that's what YouTube likes and that's what gets the views. Ironically, that, that one negative comment, or well, not negative, but critical comment about the guy who said that I'd lost my spark, that video was just a generic top 10 list, but it was number two on my YouTube charts. The spring list, where I talked about all the spring fragrances that I've always talked about, and even people complained that I was just saying the same fragrances, that got number two on my YouTube charts. The repetitiveness, the same old list and sexy list and spring list and all this kind of stuff, that does well. But there's an even more extreme form because what really, really works, unfortunately, for you and for me, by the way, I'm, I'm not above this, even though I know this stuff, I'm not above it, is if we have a fear, if we have an insecurity about ourselves, then YouTube will, YouTube will emotionally trap us into looking at videos that we don't even know that we want. I don't know how my teenage brain would have survived all those years ago when I really felt that women didn't like me, that they really, really were sort of opposed to me, I couldn't attract anything, and then I started to get into fragrances. And the thing that is being pushed and the way that the community is going is making it so that if you have an insecurity about yourself and if you have a fear about yourself, then it's just going to be constantly pushing you the big lists, the, the, the lists that, are, that tell you that this fragrance will get you laid and this fragrance will attract women and, and stuff like that, and it's all intertwined with each other. And is it Michelle's fault? Is it Andrea's fault? Well, I don't know, because you could take it another way. You could look at these lists, the, the sexy lists, the daddy fragrance lists, and you could laugh and you could go, <laughs> that's funny, that's fun. And that's how it should be interpreted. This is all just a bit fun and this is all great and, you know, it's fun to be sexy and fragrances can be sexy to a degree, but they can't solve your problems. But unfortunately, with the algorithm, you are being continually saturated with this message that fragrances can get you laid, fragrances can make you attractive, and that's what works. So what are content creators going to do? Well, they're going to continue making that type of content because that's what YouTube is rewarding them for making that content. And so more people are going to make that content and then smaller reviewers are going to make that content. And in the end, it becomes one big toxic mess where we're all saying the same thing, despite whether it's the truth or not. You see, the thing is, is that YouTube and all of these social media platforms, they were once a little bit more gracious. They were a little bit more dignified, but now they, they don't care. They just want your view because the longer that they can keep you watching, the more advertising, the more money it works. So what they want is for you to just keep watching. And how do they make you keep watching? Well, they funnel you with content that will push your buttons. It will be content that makes you feel insecure or that will make you feel somewhat shallowly secure. It is content that is trying to make you watch and continue to watch. So now, we have the ultimate battle of attrition. And who's going to win? Well, 
the person that can do the most shocking content, the person that can make the most craziest and over the top content that will make you click. The crazy titles, the crazy thumbnails, the crazy promises, but you click, you have to watch it. You have to take it in. And that's the beauty of it. And that is the thing that YouTube will truly, truly reward. Because YouTube doesn't care about giving you real information. YouTube doesn't care about you actually having a good, solid and wholesome fragrance journey. YouTube doesn't even care about truth anymore. All that it cares about is that as many people are on that site and viewing and watching as much as possible. So, the innocence is gone. The fragrance community that was once about reviewing and actually giving you decent information, it's all gone. But it's not because of the content creators, they're only following what YouTube is telling them. Because if somebody drops a top 10 panty dropper fragrance and suddenly you, with your insecurities and with your worries about not being attractive enough or not being good looking enough or, or not being enough, you see that video and that video is so bright and lovely and saying, oh, this is it this is your answer, then you're gonna click on it and you're gonna click on it and that fuels the algorithm and that fuels the whole system. That fuels everything. And that is the mess that we're in. That is why we are where we are. Because now, Fragcom isn't a community. Fragcom is a business. And you might think that the product that it's selling is fragrances, but in reality, the product that is being sold is you and your worries and your fears and your insecurities. That is the real marketplace. And you know something? You're being sold every day. So, I have trampled the fragrance dream out of you. Maybe I have disheartened you and made you feel as though this whole pursuit is pointless. And for some of you, it will be. So, what's the point? Why should you even be interested in fragrances? We have to start asking the question, who are you wearing these fragrances for? Other people or yourself? Fragrances are such a unique art form that this is a real dilemma. When you read a book, watch a TV show or a film, are you doing it because it's something other people will like about you? Or is it something that you genuinely enjoy? I want to backtrack here a little bit. Smelling good does make you attractive. Yes, I, I, I'll admit it, of course it does. The problem is how attractive. It makes you attractive in the same way that good hygiene, good style. In fact, according to real men in real style, he's had more compliments on his watch than his fragrances. But all these different elements combined can make you attractive. But to most people, fragrances will just make you smell nice and that's good it's better than not smelling nice and that's good for you because there are a lot of nice smelling fragrances but to spark attraction nice doesn't really cut it attraction comes from a lot of elements including shared values interest in looks to a degree especially if you're younger but the biggest thing and this is just my two cents that trumps most things whether it be fragrances suits cars money whatever you want is chemistry and no, not chemistry that's made in a perfume bottle. Natural chemistry. There's a spark that makes two people work, whether it be for a short-term thing or a longer relationship. I know your real issue. You don't feel that much about yourself. But to give fragrances the power doesn't really make any sense. To say that fragrances have any measure on your love life or your sex life is insulting to you. You are attractive, my friend. But conveniently, society doesn't really want you to think that way. It wants you to believe that you are not naturally attractive because then it can sell you all these different things that you don't need in a never-ending search for an answer that you already have. You have to discover who you are and how you want to come across, whatever that may be. And well, fragrances can help you with that. This is rule of 72 it is my favorite fragrance right now an amazing wonderful scent it reminds me of a few things but the aesthetic of wild camping is what it really reminds me of it's earthy it's grassy it's green it's it's somewhere in between amouage interlude man and gucci guilty absolute with 
an earthy, grassy, fresh wind smell. And I love it because it represents me right now in my life. Rule of 72 is now my signature scent. And wherever I go now, if people smell that, they know that it's me. Because it's hard to explain, but that fragrance to me represents where I am. I sort of feel as though right now I'm a little bit in the wilderness. And the smoky, earthy smell smells mature. It smells adult, and that's how I feel right now. I feel as though I'm a mature adult trying to go out into the wilderness and carve something out for myself. Whether that be here on YouTube or out there in the world of film and television. And that's what's beautiful about this fragrance. That's what attracted me to it. That's why it's my signature scent. And have I had any compliments? Well, not really. But I'm sure that people notice. I'm sure that people smell it and they just think, well, that's George. And you know something? Isn't that enough? Fragrances can tell your story for you and they can represent who you are. And that's a beautiful thing. There are so many different types of fragrances, so many different types of smells, so many different amazing combinations. This is a true art form. It doesn't have to have all of the false promises and all of the over-exaggerations attached to it. That cheapens it. It's something to me far greater, far more beautiful. It's a song that you can wear and that everybody knows you by. But there's one last thing that fragrances can do. Something that I never knew that they could do when I first started. And arguably, it's the single most important thing that they can do for you and me. This reminds me of the of usually being drunk on the streets of Manchester, to be honest with you. I used to get absolutely leathered in Manchester. Go to Yates Wine Bar, which was amazing. They right, Yates's wine bar, let me tell you something. So this is like a, a restaurant in Manchester that looked very, very sort of friendly and, and very pleasant, very nice. But at the night time, there's this like little like like children would eat here in the daytime and then nighttime like eight o'clock would hit and, and then there'd, there'd be this section that they'd pull out and there'd be a pole and people from manchester would get drunk off their ass and just swing on this pole and things like that and i did swing on the pole a couple of times when i was very drunk yeah it just reminds me of after college or, you know friday night saturday night with my friends tyler asher jacob and i'd just be leathered in this good times you know, then we go across the street to the Asian karaoke bar and just sing like shit. <laughs> it's lovely. There's it it wonderful times and although I love this and, you know, it reminds me of lots of different things, that is the prevalent memory that I have with this. This, An Oud Wood by Tom Ford. It reminds me of this um, wonderful pub in Garleston called the Harbour Inn. I discovered my love for whiskey there. They have a great whiskey selection there and I, I stayed there for a few months in 2018. It's near where I grew up actually and um, just for six months I, I wrote scripts and I, I drank whiskey there and really really friendly people, lovely atmosphere, an amazing time. A wonderful, wonderful time of my life, actually. And so if I couldn't afford Oud Wood, I'd wear this. (laughs) 
So many great memories in autumn. Hot chocolates. So many friends. So many stories I could tell you. But just this warm glow of autumn. Kiss to me it just is autumn now. It really is. <laughs> it's just so lovely that this reminds me of the struggle of trying to move here. You know, of really, really wanting something, really, really wanting it, really wanting to be here and to live here. But I'm here and it's just amazing that I have a fragrance that tells the whole journey and the whole story of that. They're not all good memories. This one in particular is very bittersweet for me. This reminds me of the boat trip that I took. And it's bittersweet because it, it was magical when I was very young. But then shortly after that, uh, me and my, my girlfriend at that time, it just wasn't, it just was not working. And I remember at the time feeling a little bit frightened to let go, but it ended. And life moved on. This one should remind me of Chris, but it doesn't. It reminds me of the very first date that I had with Megan, my current girlfriend, my current partner in my, in my life. Very grateful to have her. And, and so I, what I decided, our first date was, it was a typical me thing, very overdramatic. I took her to Edinburgh and I took her to a Michelin star restaurant. I couldn't afford it, but I was just like, oh no, this is, you know, a big date. And, you know, I really want to go out with this girl and I want this to happen. So uh, I took her to uh, number one in Edinburgh and I wore this because I thought, well, this is the most expensive and I don't know what I was trying to prove. That was some big shot, you know. But she loved me anyway. No matter who I tried to come across that day. It's just weird, isn't it? These are genuine stories of my life. And here they are in front of me. When you smell a fragrance, it goes into here, which gets a free, free ride through your brain, or in particular, part of the amygdala and the hippocampus. The two emotional parts of the brain, the amygdala is the emotional epicenter of the brain and the hippocampus is the emotional memory center of the brain so in essence whenever you smell one of these or any of the fragrances that you have boom it gets a free ride throughout your entire emotional history smelling fragrances actually from your past is an incredible way of reminiscing an incredible way of looking back but when you've done it as long as i have it gets weird like i said there are fragrances here that are some of the, my favorite memories of all time. And then there are fragrances that are actually quite hard to smell now because of the things and the people and the situations that they remind me of. But they're a very beautiful gift in that way. And we shouldn't misrepresent them and we shouldn't take them for granted. I fell into fragrances for the wrong reasons. 
I started buying them because I wanted to fill a void in my soul and in my heart. But they couldn't do that. Now, I love fragrances for very, very different reasons. And I want you to do the same. You do not need these fragrances. They need you. They are not the journey. You are the journey. And they can cheer you on, on your journey. They can represent you the best that they can. They can tell a little story of who you are, of where you are in your own life. They can represent and showcase little bits and pieces of you at the right time, at the right people. Millicium Imperial is the end of my journey. It is my favorite fragrance that I have ever smelled. And it's for reasons that one day it will be a privilege to tell you as I end my YouTube journey and as I let go of the Fragrance Apprentice. When we're all older and hopefully a bit wiser, we can pick up some of the fragrances that we once wore and we had great times with and we spent with good people and had fun. And we can smell them and go, I remember when this fragrance was me. I remember when I smelled like this. I remember when this fragrance would waft through the air and people knew that it was me. When I wear this fragrance, I feel like the best of me. As beautiful as Millicium Imperial is, I know I don't really need it. Thank you all so much for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this and want to see more content just like it, you can help by signing up to my new Patreon for just 10 British pounds a month, where you'll get exclusive content, live streams, and if you sign up for three months, you'll get a free added one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultation with me. And by doing this, the biggest thing you'll be doing is buying me time to make content consistently at this high level. Thank you so much and see you next time.